Well, I'm Jupiter at Night, and I'm here to say that film in front of a live internet audience today. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Jeremy. And I'm Alan. And tonight we're going to kind of break it down. This is another one of our really casual shows. We're just going to get into a topic that interests the both of us. Actually, something that we started talking about on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about robots and how they scare you. How I'm frightened to death of the robot apocalypse. Because it is coming. Mark my words. yeah. One day. But that's... uh, After the show, you basically said, Dude, robots? What about zombies? Yeah, if you're going to talk about robots, you got to bring up the zombies. Because really, I mean, we're doomed one way or another, but there's going to be apocalypse. And I honestly think that those are both the most likely kind of apocalypse situations. Comet's not going to hit, or asteroid or meteor, it's not going to hit us, it's not going to blow us up. Honestly, do you think that, now, I kind of do, but you think that either of these are probably more likely even than, like, global thermonuclear war? Well, why can't one of these cause oh, good point. that war? Well, let's go ahead and get into that a little bit, and we can talk a little bit about what's going on right now in the world that scares the dickens out of us, basically. And now, why one of these, or both of these, might even already be happening as we speak. I hope And not. laying down the gra- groundworks. Now, obviously, I'm frightened to death of the robot apocalypse, so that's where most of my <laughs> research has come from. Now, I've got, okay, first of all, you know what? Robots are freaking creepy. Now, I don't care how you look at it, but one way or another, they are always going to scare, the, scare me to death because they are always one of two things. They are either some sort of weird bastardization of the human race in, like, the freakiest forms possible, like this now, video. See, because here. that's just like a creepy doll. That's the thing. Exactly. It's like if you make something like a creepy doll, then, yeah, it's going to be creepy. But robots in general are not creepy. But this is not intended to be creepy. This robot was entered in a robot dancing contest. Well, either are dolls. <laughs> but okay, so they're either these strange bastardizations of the human race or they are these. Now, this thing, if you haven't seen this, this is called the Big Dog, and I encourage you to check this out uh, on YouTube. See, and that one excites you. This one scares the, the hell out of me, actually, because I can just imagine it's this like thing an AT-AT. having. It kind of. I mean, and that's cool from Star Wars, but um, check this out. The thing is so intelligent that slipping on ice, it can catch itself. How can <laughs> that adorable. not be seen as creepy? That's not creepy. That is creepy, man. Okay. That is men's engineering genius. Robots even at scare work. the president. I've got proof right here. This is a quote from Mr. Obama himself. As president, I believe that robotics can inspire young people to pursue an engin- science and engineering. And I also want to keep an eye on those robots in case they try anything. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I just, it, the point I'm making here is that I think, okay, the reason that it scares me more than anything else in the world is basically because robot, you know, the uprising that is eventually going to happen right. will be entirely wrought by mankind himself. Well, yeah, we deserve it, so who cares? But it's something that wouldn't happen without our direct involvement and actually working towards it, you know? Like, okay, let's talk about zombieism a little bit. Right, because that's another scientific pursuit that, you know, people try to extend their life and all that jazz, and uh, you're going to create zombies. They're going to eat your brains, and then you're going to be a zombie. There are already several um, diseases in the world that have zombie-like symptoms, including a malaria that's been discovered and uh, had an outbreak in, where was this, Cambodia, that actually restarts your heart. I did hear about that, Several hours after you die. And incites extreme violence in the in the victim of this. But there was no video, so I don't believe it. Oh, that's a good point. You know, pictures didn't are nothing happen. happen. Sorry. <laughs> there's there's other things though, like uh, leprosy and uh, rabies, and if you get the combination of some of those things on top of each other, necrosis, you can basically be a zombie right now. Well, yeah. See, that's the thing. It's like it's. It, I kind of believe more in the 28 days later type of zombie where the scientists, Runners. yeah, the rage, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't like those kind of zombies. I'm not looking forward to those kind of zombies. Well, now, the the slow George Romero type of zombies, you like, you know. think we can know, take those out? Oh, that would be so much fun. It would be like camping. You get population control. I should have like, made you read this before control. we did the show, actually, because this is a mathematical study 
on the effect of zomb- of a zombie outbreak on the human race. Oh, it'd be great. Well, no, this is even taking into account that the zombies that in question are shamblers, are not runners. But the mathematical conclusions that they have come to, and my site's not loading. I love the internet. Uh, it's basically awesome. that eventually the zombies win through mere, mere attrition because even if they destroy half of the people that they encounter, the other half become more zombies. So right, but what about all have, the people that kill the zombies? Any encounter that I'm the zombie be killing zombies will be like a people. video game, just running around or like hiding <laughs> in your house and stuff. You get you got to load up on ammo, of course. So even but if you, if you were faced with a zombie of your dear beloveds. You would still gun him down in the face. I might, I might right try off. to pull the Shaun of the Dead and keep him locked up in the garage. Mm-hmm. That always works out for the best. Depends on the loved one. Sorry. <laughs> so. And and when push comes to shove, they're already dead. Well, yeah, I guess you could argue that. Okay. Which do you think is honestly more likely, though? I mean, the zombieism could happen naturally. Just by accident, like just whoops. all of a sudden, like there's it's a kind new strain. of almost happening, right? All of a sudden, there's just this new strain of weird disease that pops out of Ast- Africa or something that turns people. Oh, he's Africa. Them. What's with that? It's just there's a lot of disease in Africa. I don't make the rules. I just I just enforce them. Enforce a stereotype. <laughs> That's what you just. Did. I apologize, internet, for any uh, <laughs> insubordination that may have occurred on. Anyways, uh, I think that the the robot apocalypse is just more likely to happen because as medical advances continue to advance, we get more uh, immunity disease. We get more. Now we do also get biological weapons. What about all this peanut allergies that's coming out? That's that's from getting all these great immunities. Now all these kids have peanut allergies. That's true. Actually, the rate of allergies in the human race it has been theoretically increasing. We're getting weaker. We are. Zombies are coming and they're going to eat our brains. Because we're allergic to peanuts. Exactly. You heard it here first. That's the train of logic we're following. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, okay. now, see, I, I get the robot thing, and that's why it kind of scares me a little bit more. Because like I said, the zombies, it could be fun if they weren't runners. That's fun. I would enjoy myself. I've planned for it. I have little scenarios in my head. It's awesome. <laughs> have now, you read the, the zombie survival guide? Not yet. I did wow. read Breathers. That one's awesome. It's from the zombie's point of view. Hilarious. But anyways, <laughs> now the robot thing is... it just like 200 pages of brains? No, brains. no. He, he can still think and everything, but he's treated like a second-class citizen. Oh. It's, and it goes to like AA support groups with other zombies. It's, it's pretty funny. Hi, Called my Breathers. name's George, awesome. and I'm a zombie. <laughs> but the robots, they're just going to kill us in our sleep. They're going to do... it. that's how smart All of a sudden, getting. our computer or our like... Uh, our natal or connect, if you will, you know, it's going to sense that we're sleeping. And then, you know, and then the, 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 the air, the air purifier is going to like shoot out, you know, some gas that our Dyson vacuums, our Roombas have. Eh, <laughs> and then if we try to run, the Roombas will trip us and knock us down the stairs. And we'll but break at least our, our houses will be cleaned by our robots. And so when we die, there won't be that much mess to clean up. But as well, long as they maybe. clean it, like kill us in our sleep, hey, you know, no harm, no foul. I won't know about it. What does it matter? Well, and you think the zombie apocalypse is going to happen rant, uh, like slowly enough that we'll be able to react to it and like as long as they're the rising from the mall? dead. If they're rising, from, yeah, that was awesome, <laughs> dude. They had a Scirocco in that, and that's what I drove like in high school. It started my love, and George Romero respected the Scirocco because it was awesome. Volkswagen. Getting See, no, way this is the kind topic. of thing that I'm, I'm totally uh, Those robots are adorable. They are kind of, but these robots were not programmed. They were taught to learn. Good for them. They were given the rules so of soccer. So were you and I. They were basically given the rules of soccer and uh, outfitted with sensors and taught, uh, given an opportunity to learn the game and how to play among a Was team there a ref game. that could card them? I think that was the other dancing robot that they showed for just a second there. But yeah, that's basically... This is the, the learning process. I want robots so bad. They introduce See, one that's at the a time thing, I want robots. Balls at them I and don't just... want zombies unless I can shoot them. This but is just if freaks is... me out because these things actually learn to play soccer, not just alone. No, no, no. These things were networked together and taught to play as a team. Not even taught. They learned. Now watch these, like, all these people that are doing these, these scientists and stuff. Their kids are just totally neglected and can't <laughs> even, like, run at all. Daddy, like, I want to learn yeah. to play soccer. Shut up. <laughs> I'm teaching. Learn from the robot. <laughs> what are you, stupid? Robots learning quicker than you. There's another link kids. I've got here of a, of a similar story where they took these robots that were outfitted with colored lights, different colors of lights, and then just basically given very basic programming and a, uh, a shutoff 
age of two minutes. And then they were allowed to adjust their programming. They couldn't do it on a fly, but they called these um, generational. And after two minutes, they would shut down, adjust their programming, come back online, and they learned to do things like find food, other things that were labeled as food, and avoid poisons and pitfalls. And then when they later on, after a number of evolutions, introduced an outsider, these robots recognized that guy as an outsider, that other robot, and tricked him into not finding their food. But were they programmed to do that? They were programmed to learn how to survive on a very general term But see, of that's stupid, because if they could change their programming to survive, wouldn't they stop themselves from shutting down? Oh, that's true. And I guess... I thought that's where you're going with that whole thing, that they just, like, like within a couple cycles, you know, well, this, all of a sudden they're saying, oh, this for like three minutes or something. from 2007. We haven't heard anything since, so maybe somebody should go check that bunker and make sure that the robots didn't learn how to turn themselves off. He's probably doing nasty things with them. <laughs> Those, and, and if anybody knows the scientists involved with this, warn them that they are in danger. Their lives are in danger. Very real danger. This is the whole thing I'm talking about is we keep telling the robots to get smarter. We keep telling them how to learn. And we even go so far as make robots that can reproduce themselves. What? Not only reproduce themselves, but this guy, if Gross. this guy was combined with the soccer robots that learn... Or the other, the generational one, so that he could reprogram himself and create more sophisticated versions of himself. You know what that reminds me of? That's basically, that's, that's like halfway that's to passing the... That's the Sentinels on X-Men. It totally is. That's and how is, is that for right Robot there. Apocalypse? Awesome. <laughs> but we don't have Wolverines and Cyclopses and Storms to save us from these dudes. You don't know that. We have zombies. That's true. Yeah, we're going to have zombies. Okay, It'll so be if, fun to watch. If the inevitable comes to pass, what if, uh, you know, in the worst case scenario, both of these things come to pass? Like within hours of each other. Right. Would, would humanity just be doomed and crushed in the middle? And oh, would totally. one of these come out as Definitely. the winner? All, well, I got to say, unless they, the zombies might not take the robots as a threat because there's no brain, so they might not be exactly. triggered for it. And so the robots might be like, well, screw it. We don't care about these things. We'll just, they're nothing. So, so it could be a very boring battle, actually. <laughs> but it would basically if, be if there the was, two if there was them, quick enough for the robots to be programmed to attack the zombies, like wirelessly, like on the computers, then, it w then yeah, the robots are going to win totally. I think that even if it happened like today, before robots have been fully militarized and weaponized and all that stuff, I still think that they would come out on top. Simply because, for one thing, the zombies would eventually kill themselves off because they wouldn't get the flesh. They'd kill off all the humans and then just keel over. But uh, any robots that, were, that did perceive them as a threat, if these things are smart enough to learn on their own, those soccer bots could easily trip a zombie. Don't you think? <laughs> I think many a things on this subject, <laughs> and I don't think we have enough time. Oh, you because don't? I want to point out that the number one theory on some of these sites behind the zombie apocalypse, the number one reason it might come to pass is nanobots, which is actually a robot apocalypse. Don't try to hide it. Do join them together as one <laughs> zombie robot. Ultimate apocalypse. Boom. There it is. Well, if you've enjoyed being a part of this little uh, brain discussion, <laughs> brains, brains, you can join us every Monday through Thursday here on Jupiter Broadcasting to watch Jupiter at night. We, we love seeing your comments in the chat rooms uh, about the strange and crazy things that we come up with. You can also join us over on Jupiter Colony if you want to leave comments after the fact or just, you know, right down there usually. And until next time, I guess uh, we will be back tomorrow with another show. About something. About something <laughs> important that you just cannot miss. So it'll, until then, everybody, see you later.